you know, having a baby and everybody always <coughs> tends to want to, oh, she smells like a baby. Well, of course she does. We use baby lotion and um, baby wash. Uh, but there's one particular smell that I use on her at nighttime that's supposed to soothe her. It's got lavender in it and help her sleep and calm her down at night. And You know, we find in today uh, today's world that uh, there is such a big market on essential oils and tart burners. Candles. And candles, right. And it, it provides that calming, homey, welcoming feel. Uh, and it's to each his own, you know. It provoke something in, in different in everybody. Hi, I'm Pete. This is Shauna and baby Anna, and we are Golly Family Discipleship. We're both ordained ministers in the Church of God, and we believe the absolute best way to disciple your family is for you to read the Word of God together and discuss it as a family. Uh, we invite you to do that with us on social media. Today we're on Philippians chapter 4. We'll actually close Philippians chapter 4, big portion of Scripture. Uh, it's thirteen through or 17 through 23. I'm just going to read a couple of them that talks about what we're going to talk about, which it has to do with smell and aroma. And it says, But I have all and abound, and I am full, having received of Ephroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. So the thing that the Apostle Paul says was that, what they did for him, the Philippian church, he said, was as a sweet aroma unto God. It was as if God was pleased. You know what I mean? He, he smelled it. And he was like, ah, oh, that smells good. Now, you know, everything God does, he does intentionally. And um, scientifically, there has been studies that show that your sense of smell, smells actually have the strongest ties to your memory. Oh, you smell something? Oh, I remember that from my childhood. Oh, you smell this? Oh, I remember when that happened. Um, crazy thing is, when I was a little girl, I was burnt by Kentucky Fried Chicken's gravy. <laughs> it was actually some pretty bad burns, and I had to receive physical therapy for several weeks. And um, I always remember the smell of that medicine. If I smell that medicine, it brings that memory back. I don't know why that's such a, a prominent memory, but it is. <coughs> but having our sense of smell tied to memory, I think about the actual um, thing of praising and worshiping God, of giving God glory, and it being a... Um, it being a sweet smelling aroma to the nostrils of God you know I am glad that we get to remind God look Lord what you did for me God look what you have brought me through L Lord look where you have planted me and God I, because of your goodness I'm prospering uh, because of your strength I can make it through and um, because uh, you have provided I have everything that I need you know, the Bible speaks a lot about aroma or smells and how mm -hmm. our behaviors are like that to God's nostrils, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Uh, Pastor Donald Laffer this morning actually preached a sermon on the aroma of grace, right? Mercy. Mercy and how, and how it relates to us. Uh, one of the scriptures he used was 2 Corinthians 2, uh, 2, 2 Corinthians two fifteen. It says, We are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, which is a smell, in them that are saved and in him that are precious. So what kind of aroma are you putting off? What kind of scent are you putting off in this life? Whenever we uh, have behaviors and the way we treat other people, the way we treat our family, uh, the way we, we behave uh, spiritually, are we giving God a good aroma? Or are, we, are we a stench in his nostrils? That's right. You know, um, do we put off something that actually wants people to be around us? Uh, that wants people to be in our presence. Um, like we talked about little Anna here, you know, she has that smell. And for some reason, people love, oh, I love that baby <laughs> smell. Yeah. And it reminds you of innocence and sweetness and, and a beginning of new things and gifts uh, that are um, uh, to be treasured. Uh, so uh, when we think of uh, our worship, I want God to treasure my worship. I want God to, to treasure uh, my, um, <coughs> my life and uh, the things that I've done uh, for him and for his glory. You know, I, I work at a coal mines, and there's this one guy, he always smells like syrup. And one day I asked him, he was like, why do you smell like syrup all the time? 
And he said, my wife burns that one tart. It wasn't actually syrup. It was maple something, brown sugar. I don't know. But he said, everything in the house smells like this all the time. My clothes smell like this when I leave the house. Well, anyway, you know what? You're leaving that kind of aroma. When you're around mm-hmm. people in this world and you, you meet someone for the first time or you have an encounter with them out there in public, there's a scent you're leaving. Hopefully, it's one that represents Jesus Christ well. So going forward, remember, there's four things a disciple of Jesus Christ does every day. We want you to encounter God. We want you to exalt God. We want you to edify yourself by reading the Word of God and engage this world for Jesus Christ. That's right. Tell everybody bye, Anna. Say bye-bye. God bless you.